Hello YouTube viewers, hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this video. I'm Venkat and this is Just Me, an open source channel. Right, in this video I'm going to show you how to use an elastic load balancer uh, in AWS. So in my previous video I showed you how to run your web server, how to launch an EC2 instance and then log into it, configure Apache web server and serve a default web page. And then we also use the bootstrapping method to add the commands to the user data field while launching the uh, EC2 instance. So that's on its own, right? Uh, if you want to create additional web services, additional web servers for high availability, you need a load balancer in front of all those uh, backend web servers. So that's what we're going to try and do in this demonstration. Uh, but bear in mind, in this video, I'm just going to introduce you to Elastic Load Balancing, um, how to configure it, but the focus of the video is not about uh, high availability because I'm still going to be using just one backend web server and using ELB to route the traffic to that just one web server. Uh, but in my future video, I'm going to be using AWS auto scaling feature to auto scale uh, the backend web servers. Uh, to start with, I'll be deploying two web servers um, and then as the load goes high, um, auto scaling kicks in and then does all those magic. But for this video, uh, I'm just going to install an elastic load balancer and configure it to send the traffic to just one web server. All right? Okay, let's go to EC2. As you can see, um, I haven't got anything apart from the default security group. Let's launch an instance. I'm going to select the Amazon Linux AMI and go, going to go with T2 Micro because that's free tier eligible. I'm going to go with uh, the default number of instances, one default VPC, default subnet. Um, and uh, one thing to bear in mind is auto assign public IP address. When it, when it comes to configuring the elastic load balancer, there are two options, internet facing load balancer and internal load balancer. Uh, if you want to use internet facing load balancer, you need to have a public IP address assigned to all the backend web servers. Only then you will be able to access the uh, web server from uh, the internet. Uh, if you select the internal internal load balancer option, uh, then you don't have to have a public IP address for your backend web servers. But again, you won't be able to access it from the internet. So you will be able to access it internally within VPC. So the idea here is to uh, create a web server and a load balancer and then access it from outside uh, of the VPC from internet. So we will be going with the internet facing uh, load balancer. So we need to have public IP address for all the backend web servers. So bear that in mind. Advanced details, so I'm going to bootstrap with the usual commands. Shebang bin bash yum install minus y httpd check config httpd on curl http 169.254.169.254 slash latest metadata instance id write that to var www.html index.html and then finally service httpd start so that's all we need add storage i'm going to go with the default option add tags let's add name is web server configure security group i don't have any existing uh, security group configured so i'm going to create a new security group let's say web server i'm not going to bother about the description so i don't need ssh connection because i've already uh, got all the commands that are need to be bootstrapped so i only need uh, the http connection HTTP port uh, 80 source everything. Actually, uh, you don't need this to be wide open because you're not going to access the uh, web server directly from the internet. So we are going to go through the elastic load balancer. So uh, the source uh, actually needs to be the elastic load balancer. But for this demo, let's leave it wide open. But if you are configuring uh, so we are configuring security group for the backend web servers. So the only traffic uh, the backend web server will receive is from the Elastic Load Balancer, right? Um, so you don't have to know the IP address of the Elastic Load Balancer because you won't get one. 
you will only have the DNS name for your Elastic Load Balancer. But when we are configuring the Elastic Load Balancer, we will create a security group again there. And then we can add that security group here. Uh, but for, for this demo, let's leave it as wide open. Review and launch. Launch. I haven't got any key pair, so let's create a new one. Web server demo. Download the key pair to my downloads directory. Save. Launch instance. View instances. Right, so the web server instance is getting created. It's going to take a couple of minutes. I'm going to pause the video here and come back when it's ready. All right, the instance is ready. Let's take a look. So that's the public IP address. Let's uh, quickly verify that it's serving the right web page. Okay, cool. So that's the instance ID 00718. 00718. So our web server is running fine. So now we are good to configure our load balancer. Okay, so go to load balancers, create a load balancer. So there are a few options here, application load balancer for HTTP and HTTPS, network load balancer for TCP, UDP, and classic load balancer. Although you can use classic load balancer, that's considered previous generation, so all the features that it offers are offered by application load balancer. On top of that, uh, there are also lots of other features that you can make use of. So let's go ahead with uh, the application load balancer. Create. Name of the load balancer, let's say web LB. So this is what I was talking about, internet facing and internal. Okay, listeners, uh, HTTP and port 80, availability zone. So you have to check uh, the availability zone where your backend uh, web servers are running. Okay, so you select, I've selected all those things. Although my web server is running just on this availability zone, I'm going to select all these things. Configure security settings. So this says your load balancer is not using any secure listener. So at the moment we've got just one listener, which is listening on port 80. And um, this will be on uh, different videos. I'll tell you how to, I'll explain how to configure HTTPS using KMS, key management servers, certificates, and so on. But for this video, let's keep it simple. Just plain HTTP. Configure security groups. So I'm going to use the same web server security group, which is uh, that will allow uh, connections on port 80 from everywhere. So let's select that security group. Configure routing. So this is where you configure when a request comes to the load balancer, where should the load balancer uh, direct the request to? So we need to create a target group uh, let's say uh, web targets target type let's say uh, instance protocol is HTTP uh, port is 80 protocol HTTP path is 1 advanced health check settings you've got uh, help uh, for all these if you want to change any of the default values uh, feel free to play with it I'm going to stick with uh, the defaults uh, but I'm not sure whether to select instance or IP. Let's see um, how it works. Register targets. So at the moment there are no backend targets registered and it's showing up my web server already because I've selected the different availability zones uh, during this first step. Okay, let's select this one and add to registered. So now that's registered. Review and create. Okay, let's close this. So that's our load balancer and the state is provisioning. You can see the listeners. We've got one listener, uh, HTTP 80. Monitoring, you get all these basic monitorings. Okay, so if we look at the target groups, we've got one target group and targets. So we have one target and the state, uh, the status is initial. So it says at the moment, none of these availability zones contains a healthy target. I think it's uh, getting registered at the moment. So let's wait for uh, a minute or two and see if the status changes to initial or anything. So go back to load balancer and that's the DNS name of your load balancer. So you should be able to access the web page using this DNS name. Target groups, health checks, HTTP traffic port, 
0.52 everything is looking good targets it still says the status is initial okay I'm gonna pause the video here and come back when it's ready all right so now if you look the status has changed to healthy this target is currently passing target groups health checks okay so that's good let's go back to our load balancer and copy the DNS name okay let's verify if it's working cool so our load balancer is directing is sending the traffic to the backend web server and we are seeing this web page cool so that's how you create a load balancer so as I mentioned at the start of the video this is not a proper setup this is just to introduce you to the elastic load balancer concept how to configure target groups and how to send traffic how to register targets and so on and in my future videos I will cover auto scaling configuration auto scaling groups scaling policies and so on and we can uh, create a truly highly available web server okay so as usual let's clean up all our resources at the end of this uh, video so the first thing I'm gonna do is load balancer I'm gonna delete this load balancer if you try to delete the target group uh, you will get an error because it's used by the load balancer so you got to delete the load balancer first and then wait for it to complete and then go to target groups and now you should be able to delete the targets delete yes target group is currently in use by a listener or a rule okay let's wait for a few more seconds yes okay cool so the target group is now gone so it won't let you delete the target group unless you delete the associated load balances okay let's go to instances select the web server instance action instance state terminate yes terminate the instance state is shutting down let's wait for a couple more seconds so once the state changes to terminated we can delete the associated security groups if you try to delete a security group before terminating the instance you won't be able to do it because that security group is associated with this uh, instance so that web server is now terminated if we go to security groups we have this web server security group select actions delete security group yes delete that security group is gone and then we also created a key pair delete the key pair s and if I go to the EC2 dashboard everything is back to how it was at the start of this video with just the default security group alright so that's all I wanted to show you in this video hope you learned something about the elastic load balancer in AWS if you like this video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel I've got lots of AWS videos in this series so I'm planning to release two videos every week one on Wednesday and one on Thursday okay alright thank you so much for your time watching this video today See you all in my next video. Bye-bye.